name is Shai Nirani. I'm a gastroenterologist and the director of the Pancreas Center of Excellence at the Digestive Disease Institute at Virginia Mason Medical Center in Seattle, Washington. My co-authors are Todd Barron, Ryan Law, and Ali Akbar from the Division of Gastroenterology and Hepatology at the Mayo Clinic, Rochester, Minnesota. Andrew Ross, Michael Gluck, Ian Gann, and Richard Kozarek from the Department of Gastroenterology at Virginia Mason Medical Center in Seattle, Washington. On behalf of my co-authors at both institutions, I'd like to give a brief synopsis of our paper titled, Endoscopic Treatment of Non-Stricture-Related Benign Biliary Diseases Using Covered Self-Expandable Metal Stents. Virginia Mason Medical Center and the Mayo Clinic are large tertiary referral centers for complex pancreatic or biliary problems. We treat a large number of patients with non-stricture benign biliary diseases such as leaks, perforations, and bleeding. The traditional management of these conditions has been with plastic biliary stents. However, some emerging data does support the use of covered metal stents. The data from these studies, however, is very limited. The purpose of our study was to investigate a large series, the largest to date, of cases using covered metal stents in non-stricture benign biliary diseases and to report our outcomes. Ours was a retrospective study from 2005 to 2013 at our two large volume tertiary care centers. The main outcome measures were resolution of perforation, bleeding, leaks, and the adverse events related to the use of these covered stents. There were a total of 87 patients with a median age of 62 years. Indications for stent placement were the following. We had 35 patients with bile leaks, 27 patients with bleeding, 18 patients with perforations, and seven with other conditions. Miscellaneous disorders included uh, three cases of previously placed partially covered stents, which had failed removal at prior endoscopy centers, two cases in which covered stents were used to facilitate large bile duct stone removal, and one case of a cholelidocogastric fistula with recurrent cholangitis, and one case of a sump syndrome. Both fully and partially covered eight to 10 millimeter stents were placed and subsequently removed in all 87 patients. That is, we had 100% removability. Resolution of the underlying problem was achieved in 33 of 35 bile leaks, 25 of 27 patients with bleeding, 18 of 18 perforations, and three out of seven cases with other indications. The two bile leak failures were seen in one patient dying from an infected biloma, and a second patient requiring the placement of an additional plastic stent into the cystic duct stump to finally resolve the leak. The two failures in patients with post sphincterotomy bleeding were due to the ongoing use of warfarin and clopidogrel. After withholding both these medications for an additional seven days, hemostasis was achieved. In patients with bile leaks, the median duration of stenting was nine weeks in our study. In this setting, covered metal stents removal was performed two to four weeks after the removal of the percutaneous drainage catheter. In patients with bleeding, the median duration of stenting in our study was three weeks, but we believe that two weeks is adequate in this setting. In patients with perforations, the median duration of stenting was 9.5 weeks. We believe based on prior data and our experience that four to six weeks would usually be adequate in this setting. In many cases, Patient convenience determined the exact timing of stent removal, which is what potentially affected our median duration of stenting. Our median follow-up was 82 weeks after stent removal. Seven adverse events were encountered, including six patients with cholangitis and one patient with tissue hyperplasia, leading to difficulty in removal of a partially covered stent. The main limitations of our study are its retrospective nature and the lack of a control group. Therefore, the routine use of covered metal stents for treating all benign biliary diseases cannot be recommended based on this study alone. That being said, this is the largest series to investigate the use of covered stents to treat non-stricture related benign biliary diseases. Covered stents are safe and effective for treating these conditions, especially after failed plastic stent therapy. The cost of covered stents ranges from $1,000 to $1,800 and it's clearly a potential disadvantage when compared with plastic stents, which cost about $10 to $50. In addition, covered metal stents can result in iatrogenic proximal strictures, especially when there is a stent 
to duct size discordance. This, along with the potential for sludge and stone formation, reflux of gastroduodenal contents into these large bore stents, should prompt removal of covered stents as soon as the underlying problem is resolved. A comparative study between plastic and covered metal stents would be needed before one can suggest a definitive advantage of covered stents over plastic stents. Thank you.